Hey again, church, family, and friends. Today is July 15th, 2020, and this is day 29 of our 40 days of prayer together. We have just about 11 or 12 days remaining in this as we seek God's uh, wisdom and direction, vision for us as a church doing ministry together here in Albuquerque and Taylor Ranch and, um, uh, and beyond. And so I pray that these days of prayer have been fruitful for you. Uh, my guess is, though, that they've probably been challenging. Uh, it is challenging to maintain this habit of very intentional prayer for specific things day after day after day after day. And now there are some people who uh, are just genuinely, and, and, I, and I don't say this flippantly or, uh, or facetiously at all, people who are genuinely gifted by God in the area of prayer. And uh, I've been blessed to know some of them as members of our church and in other places uh, in life, people who, who uh, just have absolutely no compunction about praying. They love praying, and when they pray, and, and when you pray with them, their their prayers are just uh, they they're just they seem particularly effective. Um, I have I have struggled to have that kind of vibrant prayer life, and so for me, uh, a prayer is uh, is something I have to work and practice on, and that I really have to persist and persevere in. And uh, my guess is that that's probably true for most of us. Now, just because praying is difficult and praying regularly about the same things for God to speak and answer, just because that is difficult doesn't mean that it's not worth doing, and it doesn't mean that we'll never get an answer from God, even as long as we persist. And so as I was thinking about this today, um, I was just reminded of a passage of Scripture from Genesis chapter 32, where there uh, Jacob, the grandson of Abraham, Abraham had a son, Isaac, Isaac had a son, Jacob, uh, Jacob was twin brother to Esau. Uh, Jacob was a bit of a trickster. Uh, as he gets older in his life, though, he, he, he begins to mature and his relationship with the Lord begins to change. And uh, on, on one occasion, as he's on his way to meet his brother Esau, from whom he's been estranged for a long time, he crosses over a uh, a river uh, on his way there, and uh, and in the night he is met by this man that he wrestles and struggles with, and it's revealed in the course of the story there in Genesis 32 that the man that he wrestles with is God, or a messenger, or an angel of God, a, a, uh, a representative of the Lord. And uh, as they wrestle throughout the night, you see here in uh, Exodus 32, uh, verse 26 or so, uh, as the, the day begins to dawn, the man, God, this person wrestling with Jacob, says, Then he said, Let me go, for the day has broken. But Jacob said, I will not let you go unless you bless me. And he said to him, What is your name? And he said, Jacob. And then he said, Your name shall no longer be called Jacob, but Israel, for you have striven with God and with men and have prevailed. This is a picture of... Uh, uh, of a man wrestling with God in the middle of the night to the point where he at some point recognizes this is no no ordinary man that he is wrestling with, that he is struggling with, uh, that, that this person that he is wrestling with is is divine in nature. And so as the sun begins to break and the, and, and the other man, God or, or an angel of the Lord, whoever it may be, says, you know, uh, let me go. Jacob's like, no way. I, I know who you are. I know what this is about. I'm not letting you go unless you bless me. And the Lord blesses him, changes his name from Jacob to Israel, and uh, and then touches his hip and puts uh, Jacob's hip out of socket. And so uh, that that moment is remembered by Jacob for the rest of his life. Jacob even renames that place Peniel, which means the face of God. This is a picture of, of this guy who who wants the Lord's blessing and who will persist in seeking the Lord's blessing until the Lord gives it. This is not a picture I don't think of of God giving in to the will of man, but God using the struggle in Jacob's life to give him an appreciation for what it means to really struggle with God, to know God, and to seek God's blessing on God's terms. And Jesus tells a parable uh, about persistence in prayer in, um, in Luke chapter 18, uh, verses uh, 1 through 8, and we read this parable. And Jesus told them a parable to the effect that they might always that they ought always to pray and not to lose heart. He said, in a certain city there was a judge who neither feared God nor respected man. And there was a widow in that city who kept coming to him saying, give me justice against my adversary. 
For, while he, for a while he refused, but afterward he said to himself, Though I ne neither fear God nor respect man, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will give her justice, so that she will not beat me down by her continual coming. And the Lord said, Hear what the unrighteous judge says, And will not God give justice to his elect who cry to him day and night? Will he delay long over them? I tell you, he will give them just he will give justice to them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? Here in this parable, we have a, a picture of a woman who needs justice, and uh, and so she goes to this judge, and he's not a he's not a just man. He doesn't fear God, doesn't fear man, uh, and and he gives her justice eventually, not because he fears God or because he's afraid of his of social or legal consequences, but because this widow is so persistent. And Jesus uses this parable to say. All that much and more will God give to you, in this case, justice, but in, in any circumstance, what you really need according to his will, if you'll persist in it. And it's and God is not God does not seek our persistence in praying because uh, he's an egomaniac and, and, you know, he gets his his jollies by us being, you know, uh, uh, just begging and pleading with him. No, I think God desires and sometimes may even uh, what seems like from our perspective, delay in answering prayer because he wants for us to really seek him. God already knows what we need even before we ask him. Uh, that that need is before him even before we, we even know how to pray most often. But uh, there is something, I think, in, in our praying that God delights in our perseverance. God uses our perseverance in prayer to shape our character, to shape our faith, to shape our dependence upon Jesus. He wants to teach us to persist in prayer because he is consistently faithful to answer according to his will. Praying for 40 days is hard, and it may feel like you are wrestling with God right now, uh, like you are not hearing from him in the time or in the manner that you thought you should hear from him. And, uh, and so I'm saying to you and trying to encourage all of us by Genesis 32 and Luke 18, not to give up, but to keep persisting, keep pressing into prayer, keep seeking uh, direction and clarity from God. Keep listening to what he would say. Do not let him go until he blesses. And surely he will do so in his will and his timing and for his glory uh, as suits his will and purposes for us. Keep praying, persist in it. Uh, our good God delights to answer our prayers according to his will uh, and, and glory in Christ. Having said that, I'd like to close our time here with just another of these short prayers from the Puritans from this uh, collection of Puritan uh, prayers called the Valley of Vision. It is a prayer that is entitled the Nevers of the Gospel. Pray with me this way. O oh Lord, may I never fail to come to the knowledge of the truth, never rest in a system of doctrine, however scriptural, that does not bring or further salvation, or teach me to deny ungodliness and worldly lusts, or help me to live soberly, righteously, godly. Never rely on my own convictions and resolutions, but be strong in thee and in thy might. Never cease to find thy grace sufficient in all my duties, trials, and conflicts. Never forget to repair to thee in all my spiritual distresses and outward troubles, and all the dissatisfactions experienced in creature comforts. comforts. Never fail to retreat to him who is full of grace and truth, the friend that loveth at all times, who is touched with feelings of my infirmities and can do exceeding abundantly for me. Never confine my religion to extraordinary occasions, but acknowledge thee in all my ways. Never limit my devotions to particular seasons, but be in thy fear all the day long. Never be godly only on the Sabbath or in thy house, but on every day abroad and at home. Never make piety a dress, but a habit. Not only a habit, but a nature. Not only a nature, but a life. Do good to me by all thy dispensations, by all means of grace, by worship, prayers, praises. And at last let me enter that world where there is no temple, but only thy glory and the Lamb's. God, may you assist us in our perseverance and persistence in praying. For Jesus' sake, amen.